Hi, my name is Gabriel Villela, and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below and click the bell icon to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we are covering how to customize workflow settings in Alteryx. Let's get started. So I have a workflow here already open, a really simple workflow. And you can see here on my left hand side that I have the configuration area for that tool that I'm clicking, right? So if I click on this one, the auto field is gonna show the configuration for that, for the input and so on and so forth. So how can we change the workflow settings. Simply just click on the canvas, the white area. So I'm gonna click on that. And you're gonna see now on the left hand side here that I have some new options. We have the canvas, workflow, runtime, events, and meta info. All part of the configuration area. So for the canvas, we can change the layout, for example. So you see that all my tools here are laid out horizontally we can actually change that here so if I choose vertical and you can see now that my workflow is laid out vertically I can change how the annotation are gonna behave so you see there there's annotation here here right so this boxes here is, is set to show but we can hide so it's gonna hide them all or show with tool names so you're gonna see now that I have the tool name and the annotation and the last one here the connection progress we can change the behavior of what is showing here in the line in between each tool so if you run this workflow you're gonna see that while the workflow is running I have some information here right but it so it's gonna go away after some time but we can actually force that information to be displayed always so we can say show and it's always going to show that information what is really useful here is the number on top which is the number of records that are going through this connection the number on the bottom here is just uh, the, the, the memory that Altrix use uh, in order to process that All right, so the second one here on the tab, the workflow, we can change the type of the workflow. On this case, I'm working with a standard workflow, but if I was working with a analytic app, I would change that here or a macro. We also have the constants. So you can see here that I have a few constants that I can use throughout the workflow and I can actually add a new one. So if I click on the plus sign here, can add a new one so new new constant and I can say here the value so the value here will be two three four and this is a numeric one right so now this constant here is available for me within the formula tool for example so let me just grab the formula tool here and just show you guys click on the X and then the constants and you can see down here that I have the user one. And if I click on that, you're gonna see the, the data preview, the number there. All right, so that's it for the workflow area. Now, what about the runtime? The runtime, I can change first the memory limit. So I can change here the amount of memory that uh, the workflow can use uh, the local for the temporal files I can change here uh, the conversion errors so there is a limit of 10 by default right uh, 10 conversion errors that can occur until Alteryx stop processing but you can change that here uh, you can change the predictive tools code page if you want to I do not recommend to change this you can set here the record limit for all inputs. So let's say you have multiple inputs 
on your workflow and you want to set the record limit like 100 for each one of them you can click on each one of them right and change that here insert the 100 value here but let's say you have multiple and you don't want to click on each one of them right so the easiest way would be go to runtime and insert the 100 here and that will apply to every input okay let me run that and just show you guys now you can see if i have 100 records right going through here just keep in mind that the amp might affect it so if you enable here the use amp engine and run that again you're going to see that that's not going to be applied so just remember to not use the amp if you are using this setting here uh, you can cancel running workflow on errors you can disable all browser tools so this is really useful right so if you have multiple browsers tools when you were developing now you don't need them anymore just disable them all here but just keep in mind that if you do that you're not gonna also see anything on the anchors so if you click on the anchors you're not, not gonna see anything here you also have the ability to show all mac macro messages so if you're working with macros the messages that are being displayed within the macro when the macro is running are not displayed here on the main workflow right so if you want all the message from the macro to be displayed down here on the main workflow you need to enable this option Another cool feature here is to disable all tools that write output. So if you enable that, you're going to see here that my output tool is now disabled. And if I run this workflow now, no records will be written here, right? Because that tool is disabled. And that's really cool when you are developing or just testing some new uh, stuff here on the workflow and you don't want to mess up with the final export. You can enable the performance profile. So if you do that, you're gonna see here down below on the messages now that I have a profile of time. And it's gonna rank here the tool that took most time to be processed to the least one, right? And on this case, it's the output data that took 80% of the time of this workflow. And the last one is the AMP engine, which is the new engine, right? Uh, that processes uh, data much, much faster. You have the events, so you can add new events here and the events can trigger a run command or trigger an email. So if you trigger a command, you need to have that command like a path file already set up and then that uh, file is going to be uh, processed if you choose to trigger an email you can trigger the email before the run after the run after run with errors or after the run without errors or just disable you need to have the SMTP server information. Uh, then you're gonna set up here the from to the subject. Already have here some uh, constants, right? That you can add. And you can also have a attachment file if you want. And here is the body of the email. So it's gonna display like a log, right? What happened on that workflow. This is really useful when you're uh, wanting to know if the workflow ran successfully or not when it's working uh, when it's running from the server for example right and you just want to know what happened of, with that schedule and the last one here is the meta info so under the meta info we can change here the workflow name so we can say in custom name here I can add a description for that workflow I 
can link that to a URL. I can change here the author name, company, and copyright information. So that's pretty much it for the workload settings. This wraps up today's video on how to edit the workload settings in Optrix. If you have any questions or suggestions, please comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.